Amen. You guys signed up there to word of God this morning. Oh, God. You know, well, I'm honored to preach the word today, and so is our dear brother Jesse. It's been an honor to share the sermon this morning. You know, the big question to ask yourselves is, why do we go to church? Why, right? Why do you get up early on a Sunday morning when the rest of the world sleeps in? Why do you worship God when the rest of the world worships money and themselves? I've heard it said that sinners go to church and the righteous go to heaven. And what's amazing is the word of God, the fellowship, makes us righteous when we're at church. Amen. What's incredible is a reality that, in reality, everybody really needs help, yeah. right? Everybody knows somebody that needs help, right? Oh, yeah. And when someone needs help, it's really sad when they don't see it, <laughs> when they don't realize that they're in need. That can be very challenging. It's like, bro, I want to help you. Man. You don't even believe that you need help. And those are challenging situations. What's incredible is God knows that we need help. And since God knows he need, we need help, he's there to provide the help we need. Turn your Bibles to Psalm chapter 54. Nice. Come on, bro. We really need to be grateful that we have a God that really wants to help us out. In Psalm chapter 54, the Bible reads in verse 4, Surely God is my help. The Lord is the one who sustains me. The title of my charge today, The One God Helps. Nice. God can look at you and see all your issues and get a little discouraged and say, oh, I, I can't help this person. I don't want to. I don't care about you. I want to leave you alone and see what happens. But the reality is, God God cares for everybody. And most importantly, God cares for you. Today we're going to go through a passage in the Bible in John chapter 11. Right. And when we read this passage today, it's important to not just read the Bible, but to apply the Bible. Let's turn our Bibles to John chapter 11. We're going to read about a man who really needed help. And the helper, God himself, was with them during this time. His name is Jesus. And Jesus, while he was on earth, he had some haters. People that didn't like him. People that loved him. People that followed him. And people that disagreed with him. And while Jesus was on earth, he made it an ambition to seek and save the lost. We need to notice right here the determination of Jesus in verse 1. Now a man named Nazareth was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sister sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No! It is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yet when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. This is incredible. <laughs> Jesus loved Lazarus so much that when the word comes to him that Lord, the one you love is sick. He knew exactly who that was. That was how much he loved Lazarus. And Jesus, in his love for Lazarus, I mean, Lazarus was a man from Bethany. He had a couple sisters. One of his sisters, Jesus knew very well. Her name was Mary. And she was the one who wiped and cleaned the, the Lord with her tears and with her hair. And she used the perfume to, in a sense, was a, uh, worth a year's worth of wages just to make sure that Jesus was taken care of. I mean, she really loved Jesus. I mean, you imagine turning a, a year's worth of wages. Dang. 
just to clean somebody. That was her love. Now, Jesus right here hears that Lazarus is sick. And we got to put ourselves in his shoes. Imagine if you find out that one of your best friends is sick. That would be challenging. This was a tough scenario. Now, in the middle of the sickness, Jesus waits where he is for two days. For two more days, he stays where he is, but he also says, though, this sickness will not end in death. I mean, this guy was on his deathbed. Jesus says, it's not going to end in death, but I'm going to stay where I am for two more days. This was a test right here. Jesus was willing to test the disciples to in a totally dire situation in Samaria. I have one point today. Come on. Left alone for a greater purpose. Come on, bro. Right here, we see the determination of Jesus. And his determination was so true, as it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, that we don't live by sight. Right? Rather, we live by faith. Yeah. And right here, Jesus wasn't in the presence of Lazarus. <laughs> Jesus only heard about how Lazarus was doing. But Jesus' faith was Lazarus isn't going to die. This sickness will not end in death. And his determination, as we read this passage here, is what leads to Lazarus' salvation. Let's read along. In verse Lord, 7. Come on, Danny. Then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago, the Jews tried to stone you, and yet you were going back there? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? A man who walks by day will not stumble, for he sees by this world's light. It is when he walks by night that he stumbles, for he has no light. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, it will get better. <laughs> Jesus had this speaking of his death. But his disciples thought he was he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, all right? And for your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Then Thomas called Didymus and said to the rest of the disciples, Amen, Thomas. Let us also go that we may die with him. This is incredible. Jesus was warned by the Jews that if you go back, we're going to kill you. They were after Jesus. And the disciples, when they heard about Jesus going to Judea, they're like, Jesus, I don't, I don't know if you remember. Um, they're, they're trying to kill you, bro. Like, like, Come on, Diddy. I mean, there's got to be a way. You can, you can heal him from here. Like, but you said he's asleep. I mean, he'll wake up, right? Most people wake up, right, when they go to bed. He'll be all right. Like, no. Come on, Danny. Let me just tell you right here. He's actually, he's dead. Uh, but the good news is that this happened not, not for me, uh, but for you. Okay, You're going to become a believer out of this. Mm -hmm. And Thomas, I mean, people call him the doubter, but Thomas didn't always doubt right here. Mm -hmm. Thomas wasn't a doubtful man. He was a sold out man. Yeah. Thomas is like, listen, Jesus, we're just going to go with you. And hey, if you die, we're going to die too. <laughs> we're going to ride and we're going to die. Yeah. And right here, we find the test that Jesus had for his disciples. Are you willing to die for the message of Christ? Come on. He lays it out here. He says, listen, I'm going to wait two more days just so Lazarus can die. Just so he can die. And just so you can wonder in your heart. Are you going to believe that I could do something great? And in this moment, he also waits, too, because he knows that, hey, I could heal him from here. I've done it before. But in reality, we're going to go back. And I'm going to see, are you going to be loyal to me? Let's read on in verse 17. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem. 
And many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. But Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again at the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life, Martha. <laughs> he who believes in me will live. And even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this, Martha? Uh, yes, Lord. I, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come to the world. And after she said this, she went back and called her sister Mary. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but still at the place where Martha met him, when the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforting her noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing uh, maybe she's going to the tomb to mourn there. That when Mary reached the place where Jesus was, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he have opened the eyes of the blind and kept this man from dying? <laughs> In an incredible way, <clears throat> Jesus is showing up. And he's on his way. And he finds out that Lazarus was dead and in the tomb for four days. Dicks. You imagine being the disciples there, and they're like, oh my gosh, we're too late. He's already been buried. It's, it's a wrap. It's a done deal. Martha finds out that Jesus was coming, and she didn't want to wait for Jesus. You know what I'm talking about? She went to go meet Jesus. She meets Jesus outside, and she's like, Lord, if you had been here, I know you wouldn't have died. Jesus is like, oh, he's going to be raised. And she, he's, she's like, I know he's going to be raised, Jesus. I know he's going to be with us in heaven someday. And he's like, no, 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 no. Let me tell you something, Martha. I am heaven. I am the resurrection of life. You have heaven when you have me. Come on. And she is blown away to the point where she's like, I got to go. <laughs> and she goes and gets her sister. And she goes and tells her sister, like, listen, the teacher is here. You got to go meet him. She gets so excited, and she runs out. And she goes to Jesus. And the people who are there comforting her, they're like, oh, maybe, maybe she's going to the tomb to mourn there. And they're going to the tomb. And everybody's coming to Jesus now. And you just imagine Jesus just kind of like, yeah. You ain't down like Thomas now. <laughs> Peter, we don't need a sword this time. Okay. Just hanging it. And then she shows up and she says the same thing. Lord, if you would have been here, Lazarus would not have died. And Jesus, with a genuine response, just says, Hey, where have you laid him? And when Jesus sees the love of the people. He sees the people crying. He sees the tears. He sees the sadness. Jesus starts weeping himself. He sees the loneliness of the people. He sees the lack of believers in the people. He sees the lack of faithfulness to God in the people. But he also sees the loyalty of Martha the loyalty of Mary. And in his tears, the Bible says Jesus is troubled in his spirit and deeply moved. I love the NIV, but I don't think it captures this moment 
good enough. When the Bible says he was deeply moved, better translations state he was angry in his spirit. Jesus gets ticked off at the lack of faith in the people. What do you mean that I couldn't do this? I could have saved him while he was alive. I could save him right now. Why don't you believe that I could do that? You know what? I'm going to teach you all a lesson. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you a miracle you're never going to forget. And Jesus is asking, where is the tomb? Let's go to verse 38. Come on, bro. Come on, Danny. Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man. By this time, there's a bad odor. I mean, he's been there for four days. You don't, you don't want to smell that. And Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you. For you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing here. I mean, I already know. Um, but I'm, I'm doing this so that they may believe that you have sent me, Lord. And when Jesus said this, oh baby, Jesus calls out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out. His hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. I mean, the first mummy. <laughs> Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. <laughs> Profound story. Right here, Jesus, in anger, is determined to show the people that he has the power to give life even to a dead person. In order that they may believe, and he prays out loud just so they can hear the prayer. I don't know if you ever did that before. Like your faith is so strong, I don't even need to pray. But since your faith is so weak, I'm going to pray in front of you. Um, and Jesus prays for them, in front of them, so that they may believe through this miracle. And what's incredible is Jesus again was angry. And, and in that anger, he focused it all on doing a miracle. When bad news happens, how do you react to it? <laughs> Jesus felt the sorrow. He cried with the people. But Jesus got angry at the lack of faith of the people. And he was determined to move God to make a miracle. Yeah. Is that your faith? Come on, bro. What's incredible here is Lazarus isn't just a regular name. Names in the Bible mean something. Mm -hmm. Lazarus literally means the one God helps. Wow. Lazarus is everybody on the face of the earth today. Mm -hmm. We all need help, right? Yes. We all need help from God. Nobody can do this on their own. We all have doubts. We all have insecurities. We all have sin, and only God can free you from it. Right, right. Yeah. Lazarus is you in this message. Right. We were all dark. We were all dying spiritually, and it's God who saves us and brings us back to life. Oh, Lazarus right here is a man who is in help, who is in need. And when God gives you life, just like God says, take off the grave clothes, and let him go. God had freed Lazarus. I hope he wasn't naked right here. <laughs> but they said take off the grave clothes. Amen. <laughs> Meaning he left the past in the past. Lazarus was fixated at the future. That from now on, wherever Lazarus went, everybody in the town, everybody in the village is going to remember this miracle from God. Lazarus wasn't just going to live his life as a normal person from here on out. He was a testimony of God's grace. A testimony of the glory of God. That's when a new Christian repents and gets baptized. 
That's what happened when Ed said Jesus is Lord. Come on, Ed. That's what happened when Lisa said Jesus is Lord. Didn't she do an amazing job? Hey. Of me? Yeah. That's what happened when Russell said Jesus is Lord. That's what happens when we say Jesus is Lord. We take off those brave clothes, amen? Yeah. We ain't walking around looking like a mummy anymore. We died to that past. We're a new creation today. You guys with me here? Yeah. And what's incredible is when we repent of being Lazarus and being the dead man walking, now we get to be a new creation, a live man talking. We share our faith. You guys with me here? Yeah. We live as a testimony to the glory of God. We live and say, hey, I used to be dead. I used to be Lazarus. I used to be you. But now I get to live for Jesus. We share our faith. This was radical. Jesus took his disciples with him on a death mission. We can get killed. They can kill us. But you know what? Everyone there is going to have an opportunity to hear the truth, and it's worth it. For Jesus, that was his focus, to preach the word. I want to ask you a question. Were you in a Bible study this week? Were you preaching a word this week? Have you shared your faith every day? Don't put your grave clothes back on. Come on, man. You better leave them off. Don't go back to that site. Don't look at the tomb. That is the past. And we focus on the future. You guys with me? Yeah. I want to inspire everybody. Let's repent. Come on, Danny. Let's on, Danny. be Jesus to help other Lazarus. You guys with me? Come on, Danny. Be in a Bible study this week. Be in a time where you open your Bible and you share the gospel. You share God's love. You cry with somebody. You be there because they need you. Be that for someone this week. Amen? Amen. 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 But not just this week, every week. That's the heart of God. Yes, sure. Come on. Let's have daily evangelism. Don't wait till Bible talk. When you wake up, that should be in our prayers. God, I pray for the person I'm going to meet today. Yeah, have the heart of Jesus, amen? amen? God saved us who were lost so we can go and save the lost. I love you guys. Amen.